Alright guys, welcome to video part 2 of building the stand for the tube bender. So let's start cutting some metal and jump into it. Alright, so let's take our tube and start marking it up for the specific bend points and cut points that we need to make on the overall length of uh, tube that we need. And we're going to use the spec sheet that I printed off uh, from the Bintech software. So this again has the example of what our piece is to look like and where we need to place our clamp and where uh, each bend will be made on the tube. So first we need to mark uh, the tube up and start measuring out where everything's going to uh, take place. So let's do that. Alright guys, so now we have all the tubes cut to the specific length and I have each one uh, oof, Whoa, yikes, stay there <laughs> I have each one marked where I need to place the clamp that's for this tube bender and there's two locations So I'll, I will place the clamp in this first spot that I have marked as C1 and then I have another location for C2 and the clamp will go to this position after we make the first bend and then we'll rotate it 180 degrees and that will give us our uh, offset S-bend. So let's get this clamped up. I'll show you that. So the clamping block is kind of a unique feature to this bender and you basically set the block or set the tube inside the block like this and then we'll clamp it down So now I have the tube clamped up in the bender and now I need to remove the slack from the back end of it and all I need to do is just engage the uh, uh, cylinder and kind of apply some pressure to it a little bit. So you can either kind of twist this knob here to see if it's under tension or just jiggle the back. I kind of do both. Alright, so once I feel the tension inside of there, then I know I can adjust my uh, angle gauge, make sure it's on zero, make sure everything's on zero, and now I'm ready to bend it. So I'm gonna bend it to 34 degrees, and then I know that this uh, tube is gonna have a spring back about four degrees, so we'll go from uh, 34 to 38. <laughs> so, uh, and then that will spring back to the 34 position. So let's do that, let's see what happens. So now we're at uh, 38 degrees, so I'm going to back it off and see what our spring back is and still leave it under tension a little bit. All right, so now I can move this and we're right at 34 degrees and we're at 34 -ish degrees on that gauge as well. So we're good to go. So now I need to remove the uh, tube and rotate it 180 degrees reclamp at the second position and then we can do the second bend.
Okay, so we're at position number two, and let's do the other the other bend. All right, guys. So I have the tube out of the bender. It looks good, and I have the second one. It looks good. You can see that. Uh, I'm going to do the other two legs and then we'll start uh, welding this table together for the bender so I can move on past this and get to the chassis. Alright guys, as you can see the uh, tubes turned out fantastic. Uh, each leg is done for the table so now I need to get to uh, uh, cutting up the rest of the steel for the top and bottom base. But I'm pretty happy with how everything turned out. I was kind of uncertain on the tube bender just because I didn't have any experience in it and I'm getting ready to, to burn through all the steel for the chassis. So I, I kind of wanted to use this opportunity to test uh, how to use the tube bender over here and then also how to use the software that Bintech software to hopefully save me some time and mistakes down the road by calculating each bend uh, correctly so as you can see the tubes ended up being exactly 30 inches each bend is exactly in the spot that I need it so uh, I'm pretty excited with this and I would say this is not like a uh, super easy bend to do on your typical system without it being you know warped or, or you know uh, kind of tilted because it's, it's sometimes hard to from just my experience with talking to other people to uh, do a bend without it you know veering off to one side or the other and keeping everything aligned uh, perfectly within the plane that you're you're bending it on so doing a, an S bend or offset bend like this I think was a good test of both the software and the bender. So now I can get to building and finishing up the table and then back to the chassis. So let me get to that.
All right guys, so here's the stand. It's uh, pretty much completed. I still need to add just a few extra little things like a shelf, um, kind of from the top to the bottom uh, in between that area there, just a little tiny shelf to hold some of the smaller uh, pieces to the bender, like the clamps and uh, bolts and whatever. So I'll add that later. And uh, right now I have the shelf for the main dies. And so I have a lot of room to add more dies right there and I'll probably add like a little steel grate uh, on the bottom just to catch stuff if it falls over or whatever but these are going to probably put a uh, like a brace that goes across to keep those from uh, falling or sliding or whatever uh, they're pretty heavy so they're, they're not going anywhere and unless you just you know jar the, the whole stand and push it crazy uh, other than that it's uh, it's coming together pretty good this was a, a nice little project to jump into and just get myself re-familiarized with the bender and just uh, how to, to use the software which really turned out great. The software uh, just really did a great job as far as I was kind of surprised. It's a little quirky to use just because I come from a CAD background and it's kind of CAD but you know I don't know it's just different. Uh, but you know just the way that it uh, calculates all of your bins for you with this uh, bender and shows you exactly where to place your your clamps and and where to uh, you know make the s specific bend and and how to you know draw it up it, it really worked nice so I was pretty surprised it saved me a bunch of money because I know it would have messed this up <laughs> pretty certain and I didn't mess up any tubes so you know pretty good uh, first try and it was all a, a success so I'm pretty happy with that the bender of course did a great job at bending everything uh, no crinkles or wrinkles or uh, cracks or craziness in the bins so everything turned out uh, great and I have a nice little stand I'll end up painting this black and uh, probably add a, another little shelf piece to come off the back just as a uh, work area and also to hold a, a tube notcher that I have that's kind of over here in a bunch of big mess so it's a tube notcher right there and yeah so the stand is done for the most part uh, I'm not gonna really do any more videos on this and like I said earlier this is just really get myself reacquainted with how to fabricate stuff again it's been a while I took a break from that so using the tube bender and getting back into welding and fabricating again has been great and the next stage is going to be uh, I think uh, building the center section to the chassis so we're going to start with the main base and just mock it up on the floor uh, temporarily right now I have a, a bunch of stuff coming in I'm going to mock up the uh, the lower portion of the base and then kind of work uh, forward from there where uh, we bring in the engine and some of the drivetrain components like the transmission and the engine and uh, some of the steering stuff and all that just to start placing everything out in in kind of real space and then also go back to my CAD and and make sure uh, I've you know calculated for all the clearances of all that stuff that I need to squeeze into the engine compartment area and also the the, the main cockpit area and this week I'll, uh, I also have the uh, rear suspension um, set up coming as well so I'm excited about that and we'll start being able to mock that piece as well and get that placed uh, where I want start figuring out the exact wheelbase which is pretty much going to stay the same and uh, And then I can start figuring out the ride height and just there's just a lot of stuff to go from there But it's nice to start getting some stuff moving and get this little project out of the way And now I can start fabricating the main chassis So you guys uh, have that to look forward to in the next video, which I hope to have out uh, next Tuesday So my goal is to try to release a video every Tuesday uh, just once a week and hopefully I can stick to that <laughs> so uh, if anything I'll just do a short update if I don't have a lot of content uh, to cover or whatever but hopefully I'll have a lot of stuff moving 
but sometimes there's just a lot of time where I'm just sitting at the computer trying to figure out, you know, how uh, to, to place suspension components or whatever it is that I need to do. But anyway, um, that's coming up next. And you guys uh, look forward to that. And I would appreciate it if you gave a little like and thumbs up and shared the video and told all your buddies and friends and <laughs> and all that good stuff. Uh, because now I think a, a lot of stuff is going to start happening uh, quicker and, and start getting into the fun stuff. So anyway, with that, uh, I'll see you guys in the next video and talk to you later.